Well, good morning. Welcome to One Man's Faith. At least I guess it's morning for you, wherever you're watching this. Uh, welcome to One Man's Faith. Glad you could be with me. My name is Neil Owen, and uh, we are we're going to continue on in the Word of God because where else is there to go? You know, it's the, it's it's the best book in the world. It gives us everything we need. We just need to understand it. And you don't have to go to commentaries or people with PhDs to do that because you have a PhD living within you. His name is the Holy Spirit. And Jesus even said, hey, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit because he's going to teach you all things. He's going to bring all things to remembrance. So that's what you need more than anything else is to be in contact with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit lives within you. And because of that, we need to learn to trust that and trust Him. And when we say, Father, what does this mean? Expect Him to answer you. Because that's what He wants you to do. He wants to teach you what this Word says. He wants you to become more intimate with Him and, and God because that's the relationship that we are supposed to have. And so, I just want to encourage you, if you're not in the Word of God, get into the Word of God. Start to read it. If you don't have any kind of a schedule or whatever to read, then go to our website, www.nhfministries.org, and, and pick on the, uh, I think it's Bible reading or Scripture reading. I've got what the page number is or page name is. And we've got We've got a layout for you, and we have it every month. As a matter of fact, it's a three-month layout uh, that you can follow. We this year are doing uh, the Old Testament reading and a New Testament reading. And right now, we just started Numbers, and we're in the middle of Mark. So you don't have to wait. Just jump in. Jump in and start to read and let God teach you and show you and bring things to you because you'll always find something there. You can say, well, Neil, I've already read through the Bible. Do it again. Listen, every time you read, you will find something new. I guarantee you, I've been, we've been doing this for 10 years. And every time I find something new because it's living and active and and. It's, it's the way God is. As you grow, you, you know, you start off as a, as a toddler, and then you go, you know, you go to a, uh, a young person, then, and then to a tween, and then a teen. You know, you grow up. Well, because of that, you see different things for you at that period of time in your life. And so man, I, I, I can't encourage you enough. Get into the Word of God and let Him show you. Don't rely on just your mind and you thinking you can do it. You know, TV teaches us, oh, I've got to do it on my own. Nobody else can help me. Well, that's a lie. The Holy Spirit wants to show you God wants to show you, but we've got to learn to call on Him and not try to do it on our own. He's not there just for the big things. I can remember one time I was in a, we were in a little prayer group when a guy prayed and says, he says, God, I know you've got a lot of things to do and you're too busy, but I, I need to ask you this. No, that's not right. He's never too busy to hear you. Never. And he wants to show you because he built you. He wants to show you the best way to go. And he will if you'll let him, if you'll get into his word. All right? So that's why we're going to use the word of God and we're going to get into it. So let's open up and let's, um, I'm going to pray. You get your Bible uh, and go to Matthew, or excuse me, go to Psalms or Psalm chapter 5, the fifth Psalm, okay? And so, Father, we thank you for this day. 
Father, I pray you would go out and touch lives, that you would open you would open ears to hear, that it would sink into the heart. Lord, you said that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so, Father, may we grow closer to you. And I thank you, Father. I love you. I praise you. God, you're so good. You're so good. And thank you, Lord, that you have given us your word, that we can see and know who you are and learn and walk by your commands. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, so you there at chapter 5 of Psalm. It's a, it's a beautiful psalm. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my groaning. Heed the sound of my cry for help, my King and my God. For to thee I pray. In the morning, O Lord, thou will hear my voice. In the morning I will order my prayer to thee and eagerly watch. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness. No evil dwells with you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You have hated all who do iniquity. You have destroyed those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the man of bloodshed and deceit. But as for me, by your abundant loving kindness, I will enter your house. At your holy temple, I will bow in reverence to thee. O oh Lord, lead me in your righteousness because of my foes. Make your way straight before me. There is nothing reliable in what they say. Their inward part is destruction itself. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Hold them guilty, O oh God. By their own devices, let them fail. In the multitude of their transgressions, thrust them out, for they are rebellious against you. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy, and may you shelter them, that those who love your name may exalt in you. For it is you who has blessed the righteous man, O Lord. You have surrounded him with favor as a shield. Wow, that said everything I just said a minute ago, didn't it? Give ear to my words, O Lord, and consider my groanings. You know, there's 150 psalms in this book, and we have made it more poetry than anything else. When I say go to a psalm, you're going, you're going to think poetry in most cases. But do you realize that in most cases, especially the psalms were meant to be sung? Just as we have a hymnal in most of our churches that has songs in it that we sing, and most of them have been around for a millennia, you know, that's, we know that if I say, take your hymnal out and turn to page 360, that you're going to open up to a song and we're going to sing. Well, Really, that's the way most of the psalms are set up. Look at the look at your look at your song, your psalm. <laughs> psalm five. Notice it says for the choir director. <clears throat> it doesn't say for the musician or for the poet. It says for the choir to, choir director for flute accompaniment. For flute accompaniment. You'll look as you go through, you'll see that a lot of them say, like Psalm 6, the very next one, for the choir director with stringed instruments upon an eight stringed lyre. Psalm 7, the, the Shagayan of David, which he sang to the Lord concerning Cush the Benjamite, Benjamite. a Shagayan, a, sh a a Shagayan is a, let's see, how does, let me see what the, uh, the definition is this, a dithyrambic rhythm. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Actually, it's this, a wild 
passionate song. A wild, see, we don't think about the Psalms or any of the Word of God as being wild and passionate, do we? But that's what Psalm 7 is about. Now think of a wild, passionate song and the melody that may go with it and stick it in there. You see, David tells us what to use because in, in many cases, even, uh, even with our music, it was meant to be played a certain way by uh, the author of that music. He had in his mind a certain way, a certain rhythm, a certain beat, uh, and that's the way it should be played. You know, Amazing Grace, okay? Amazing Grace. Have you ever thought about doing this to that? Amazing grace, how sweet this sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm fine. I was blind, but now I see. It, it doesn't quite, it doesn't quite, it doesn't quite go the right way, does it? I, you probably went, ah, when you heard that. It was meant to be sung a certain way. There are uh, uh, a lot of churches have have organs that have draw bars that that add uh, pitch and melody and 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 uh, harmony harmony to the to the chord being played, and a lot of hymnals you'll see at the very top it'll do something like five dot sixteen dot ten dot three, it and what they're doing is is that's the setting for those draw bars to get the sound that the author intended. And that's what's happening here in the Psalms. He's saying, play this on an eight-string lyre for the choir director. This is a wild, passionate song. All right. Think about that for a minute. Get a, go ahead, get a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. <laughs> 